We cannot forget about our colleagues that are not able to watch the stream live. Guys, remember, if you go to Twitch TV channel, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, if you go to our Twitch TV channel, you can find the event calendar for the upcoming streams. And, uh, you know, it tells you when the awesomeness will be spilling all, all, all around the internet. Anyway, let us jump straight. <gasps> oh my god, someone screwed up the scoreboard again. No! Alfred, you're fired. But yeah, so uh, now we've fired Alfred and found his replacement, who's equally old and ridiculous. Uh, we have Neoplanet S. E V Z action. So, very exciting. Now oh, it's fixed. Um, Beautiful. Beautiful, as you say. Oh, wait, there's one more mistake. Alfred is so sloppy tonight. <laughs> One more mistake, it should not read best of three. This is a best of nine series. That best of nine. A lot of matches. Yeah, a lot of matches to come. And this is not only a test of the, the game skills of the players themselves, but it's also a test of their stamina. They have to be very resilient to play a best of nine series. And it gives you plenty of room to experiment around with the builds, try to surprise your enemy. And anyway, here is spawning the top right position on Kespa Neo Planet S. He is Aces Nurture. And in the bottom left hand corner of our screen, we have Papa Toss himself, White Ra. That, that, you gave it such a nice flavor, Papa Toss himself, oh my god. <laughs> I think I will, I will shamelessly steal that from you the next time I All cast. Right. I'm okay with that, you can do that. Can, can I do it can with, share with intro an old ideas. man's voice? The Papa Toss himself, he is White Ra! <laughs> I remember White Rock. Yeah. Oh no, it's playing Broodwalk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was. White Rock is. Uh, I I don't want to say ancient because he's like 32 years old, uh, not too much <laughs> older than I am. But in gamers terminology, he's very old. He he probably is the the oldest living uh, professional gamer. I mean, I believe uh, he is. Uh, him and Nesty are right up there, but I believe he's older yeah. than Nesty. So anyway, Papa Whitera just going for a pylon here, and he will be probably going for his good old strategy, which sounds make defense and uh, sorry make expand and then defense it, and that that has been working extremely well for him. Um, <laughs> on the other side, he's also harassing with his probe, as you said, the mating dance between the probe and the drone and the hatchery will be born unless. White Trap protects himself with a pylon. <laughs> ah, and he does. Drone is gonna leave. Is he gonna do the insta cancel? Oh, look at that! Oh, Nurchio faked him out. Nurchio left, tried to come back and said, Oh, did you cancel that pylon? He's gonna make him uh, cancel the last moment, or he's gonna finish oh. it. Oh, look at that. Nice. All that wasted time. Nurchio could have built, put the hatchery down to the third a long time ago, but he was thinking that White Ra was going to cancel the pylon and did not. But that was uh, a nice move there, a nice touch, because the pylon, when it's building, it doesn't have this huge uh, sight range. It, it has a much slower view radius. So if you just keep your drone outside that, you make sure that uh, he doesn't see that you're waiting there, lurking in the shadows. The shadows. Uh, but yeah, we had uh, three hatch after pool. I mean, well, uh, pool double hatch opening anyways for uh, for the reserve player. Uh, pretty pretty standard stuff. That's a lot of time. I mean, if you're a newer player and you want to find something that's safe that you can do, and you see a pile on the low ground, you're almost always going to be safe going with the pool and then two hatches Check right now. Check this scouting out of Nurture. I think wow. they... I think they should remove uh, the Zelenaga Towers from all of the maps because this forces players for very active scouting. Uh, just setting up a nice patrol pattern with his Zerglings is so freaking awesome. I love this play from Nurture. Yep, there's not a lot of stuff to be doing with those Zerglings anyway, so you might as well make them useful and uh, get uh, get a good scout on. So uh, let's see what White Row will be going for. Uh, right now he's just finishing his cybernetic score. Uh, he needs to be wary about where he places his tech buildings. It seems it will be there around this pile. I'm not sure it's a good choice because this overload will sh well, yeah, in a long while, but it will surely get there eventually. So um, so we'll see what 
what Whitra opts for, there is still no plus one upgrade, and this is a pretty significant tell. Yeah, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I think White Ra's gonna go Stargate. He loves the Stargate. He goes for the Stargate quite a bit. Um, do you think that he's gonna go in that direction as far as tech is concerned? I think he will because White Ra has one of the best micros with his uh, Stargate units. But then there is no tech choice as of yet, and he's going for plus one upgrade and putting Ooh, down another gateway. Another gateway. Will he go? Will he just go straight up for the third Nexus? That's actually a nice choice for him. Whitra was one of the inventors in uh, Hadam Swarm beta days. Oh, we can refer to, w refer to them as past right now. Hard of the Swarm beta days. Um, <laughs> like two months ago, they, they were the, the present, but right now it's the long forgotten past. He, he has engineered a build that allowed him for securing a very fast third with the usage of Mothership Core instead of going Ooh, we got for just... a little just, bit of harassment uh -oh. going here up in the front. We have uh -oh. Mothership Core, the Zealot, and the Stalker. Zealot's gonna get trapped a little bit here, but uh, not before taking out... Oh my god, he's just keeping the Zealot alive for quite a oh bit of time. Oh my god, and kiting! And wow. many Zerglings go down. Did you see that? The Mothership Core was just following the Zealot and making sure that uh, that all the Zerglings get as much damage on their faces as possible. Now, Whitra took care of a lot of Zerglings. Let's take a look at the losses tab. It's uh, 325 resources lost for Nerchio here. And what is Whitra oh, opting in wow. for right yep, now? This is a strong 2 bait push. It's a really aggressive proxy pylon. Um, not that many gates. He doesn't have that many gates. He can definitely yeah. expand off of this. He's not all in. Uh, but it is a strong two base push. And he's going and, uh, for he might take this base range. over here. Oh my god, with only a couple of units, that's that's freaking awesome. And right now, Whitra dealing a ton of damage with just two gate army? That's nearly impossible to imagine, but Nurture was not prepared to take to, to take this attack. And and maybe he was just too sure of himself. But he he now will have enough roaches to deal with it. But so far he has lost a spine crawler, and oh my god, his losses are just piling up as we speak. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, he was good enough to hide his other two gateways. So, uh, so this is a four gate attack, uh, and no scouting went in uh, from the Overlord. He did manage to get a couple of uh, Zerglings in there, and now he's following up with the Robotics Bay. Um, yeah. When we check so, the nice losses, bit of pressure. when we check the losses tab, is actually quite equal for both of them. But I wouldn't say this was equal at all. Nurture was forced to produce army, while he would prefer, highly prefer, to go for a better drone saturation. He he has 58 drones, which is a nice lead over over Whitra. But at this point, Zergs most usually have many, many more, and uh, this this was the direct cost of Whitra's attack. Nice harassment, he did not use the recall ability, and now he has to defend. Uh-oh, uh-oh, the sentries are slightly out of the position, but then still aggressive. Ah, let's get them! Ah! <laughs> I've never seen such aggressive sentries. Yeah, well, they got an immortal to back them up, you know? They got their buddy, you know? They're not so tough normally, but when they got their big friend hanging out with them, all of a sudden they become very tough. <laughs> yeah. And yes, we have the third Nexus, the Colossi is on its way, but Nesho, he, he just seems to be intent on following this up with, uh, with just Zergling and Hydra, which is a very dangerous composition to deal with. Now, if you support that with Vipers, you can pull off any Colossi that are in, this, in, the, in the Protoss composition. That is so freaking nice, and now Nesho, he's just preparing himself. I can see that in his eyes. He's sitting right next to me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> uh. But yeah, really nice use of the Mothership Core here to sort of poaching out, getting vision, and uh, oh, seeing exactly what's oh, going on. And we a run by. Lean run by. Not too good. And he's another. Oh! Both mineral lines here, and he's going to start dealing a lot of damage. Uh, oh. Yrow reacts almost instantly, and he's going to move into the natural of Nurchio. There's actually Zerglings at every single base right now. Uh, oh my and, uh, god, how did this we're happen? We're getting into some sort of weird base race type scenario, not quite a base race because they're uh, both going to have one base at the end of this. Oh no, that's really not a good place for wow! to be, but he manages to keep it alive with some expert force fields. Wow. This, this game is oh already amazing. This game bought me. Uh oh, but the Mothership Core is going down. There will be no recall right now. 
And this may have just destroyed Whitera's plan. He needed that recall to get back to his bases. But it seems Nersho is going back. He's swinging back all them all across the map. And Whitera is intent on killing Nersho right here, right now. Fire is finishing up. I don't know if he's going to be making any use of that. Looks like Roach Hydra for the, for the rest of the GG. Nersho cannot stand the heat. Whitera. <laughs> oh, yes. And... Uh... The fire still burns hot within Whitera, and he's a very difficult opponent to play with. Guys, by the way, we've heard your feedback that you want the music to be a little bit more silent. Sorry for that. I have been playing the campaign, and I'm a huge fan of Blizzard music. I had to tune it up. <laughs> That's as simple as it is. There is no conspiracy behind this. We're not trying to mind control you into watching us. No, this is just because I'm a huge fan of Blizzard music. That they have the best music studio out there when it comes to PC games. I I very infrequently hear soundtracks as good as the ones that come from Blizzard. Would you agree with that, Jack? Or do you have any? I other really like it, especially Brood War. Brood War music holds a special place in my heart and will until I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the White Ra uh, starts up one zero. Yeah, exactly right. So we will be going into the next game right about now, or maybe in a second. I have my mana potion back. Very good. So you pull up, you can cast any sort of yeah, spells can... or games. Uh, right uh, now I could mana. cast chess and make it look exciting. <laughs> now, chess I think is a very exciting game, but, uh, but people Absolutely. on the internet are not very used to watching chess. Um, so anyway, if you wonder how Nurture looks like, uh, here's a, a map loading screen where we can see how he looks like, how Hyun looks like, and that goal for SC2 gives you up to one uh, so to, to 1500 euros every month, sponsored by ESL TV and Twitch. That's nice. That's very nice. Be using their map, of course. Yeah, why not? You know, it's, uh, it's nice and fancy. And uh, anyway, now spawning here in the bottom left position on Daybreak Bab, he is none other than Aces Nurture. And in the top right corner of our screen, he won the first game. Can he win some more? It's right raw. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, the... basically that is the plan, winning as many games as possible. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically the strategy of any surviving StarCraft 2 player on the professional scene. But uh, I wanted to remind you guys that if you follow us on Twitch TV and if you watch this stream until the very end, you will get a chance of winning your own Heart of the Sword copy if you don't have one yet. I mean, we will not be asking that question. Do you have it? Uh, well, uh, uh, I sense you have it, so you won't get it. No, there won't <laughs> be anything like that. Uh, we'll just give a free Heart of the Swarm copy to one of our viewers. So, um, if you if you like the stream, if you like the players themselves, feel free to stay and feel free to watch. Um, let's let's discuss the strategies and possibilities. Uh, after the first game, Whitera showed us some nice. Um, I think it was a very complicated timing push, where he just hit off two gateways, but very precisely timed. He had a lot of units, and then he followed up with additional gateways and robo, and that just sealed the deal. Uh, and it's very similar to what we had uh, Arthur playing previously when we were casting Arthur versus Hyun, was it? Yes, it was Hyun. Yeah, it's... Um, I want to go back really quick because Zero Hour in the chat mentioned something when we were talking about music and I missed it. Where soft music. Oh <laughs> my god. Final Fantasy music? Final Fantasy X? Final uh, Fantasy VIII? Yeah. Some of like the best, most amazing melodies that I've ever yes. heard in my entire life that I just, I just, hear them in my sleep, you know? Yeah, they just grab you by the balls and hold you. There's, yep. there's no turning back away from them. Yep, absolutely fantastic. But as far as, you know, back to the game goes, uh, we got the Nexus first and the Forge going on. Um, cool first, nice safe opening for Nurtio. Oh, and White Rack White goes for this pylon, yeah. I almost I mean... lost his probe. I mean, he's one hit away from death there. That was very Roberto, close. run! <laughs> and he cancelled the pile. I'm not sure about that, but but anyway, cancelling cancelling mind games. <laughs> pylon cancelling is uh, is the requisite really if you're playing against Zerg. If you keep your pylon up, it has been proven by a bunch of Korean scientists that it is not very effective and thus 
you need to be wary about when do you keep your pylon or not. And uh, and keeping your pylon has very specific uses. If you want to block perhaps the, the natural and the third base, and then you know that you're going to hold any aggression. Yep, but uh, over here with this particular opening, he gets the Zerglings out right away. Uh, and he's actually going to send them across the map. Ah, uh, the uh, photo cannon finish is just in oh. time. Oh, uh <laughs> oh, and he actually gets a little bit of oh surface my God. Two uh, wings on this pylon. And why, why tra Nature often, Nature often does that. He's very precise with his positioning. He just feels the range of stuff in StarCraft 2. And Whitra right now um, will need to use one of his chrono boosts to get a faster zealot. And this pylon will go down take and Whitra... Now. Nice bit of damage. And Whitra is nice. supply blocked right now. When you're going for a Forge Fast Expand, uh, it just seems nice and an economic build. But in fact, you really struggle with the pylons and supply to keep up because uh, you just have barely enough minerals to make the, the next pylon you need, to make the cybernetic score, to make the, the, the photon cannon, the nexus itself. You just spend so many so many minerals that you, you cannot allow yourself to lose a single pylon. And by the way, this game is being commentated live, answering your question on the chat. Uh, there is no replay section on the right, as you can see, so this, this must be a live game. Yes. Absolutely, 100% live. No one knows what the outcome is going to be. Even the players don't know what the outcome is going. To be. All right. So, um, so <laughs> let's see. Yeah, we got the two gases taken. Uh, no additional gates yet. And for the Zerg player, we haven't seen. Yeah, double gas just taken. So you just really gonna start getting the gas. And we'll start to see um, what he's going for now. Yeah. Saturation is looking really nice. And Zachariah the Zealot is just doing some nice brave scouting. He wants to make sure. Oh, what a nice timing of Whitra. He sent the second Zealot in just as the first one requires reinforcements. So, uh, you know, the Zachariah brothers are here to deal damage. And they mean it. And, uh, and here we are uh, with the Mothership Core pressure. This has really become a staple of PvZ. Just as much as the pylon block and the um, the dance of the of the probe, you just see so many times a ship core with a couple of units out in front to attack uh, because of that recall. Um, because of that recall, you can pretty much go out on the map and do oh, anything yes. that you want. But you have to be careful. Call right back. Miss microing your mothership. The easiest thing around the world because if you just oh, he's gonna get sort of the surround uh -oh. on these zealots, they're not really gonna do as uh -oh. much damage as you want to. The queen is right in the mothership uh -oh. core, and the queen should be able to take the mothership core out. Uh, uh, he actually, yeah. this is a really aggressive pylon. He might be trying to get a little bit more uh, damage done. He's got uh -huh. four gates, four gates on the way, so he is not done. This is a full follow up uh -huh. here, and the roaches are oh no. Oh, no, he's... Oh, okay, all right. So he's got one pylon left. I thought that was the only pylon he had. He does have one yeah. pylon left. But, uh, but he might be going home here. He was too ballsy with this move, and he's trying to secure himself yep. a third base, and he shows that up to Nurture, so Nurture will know. Ah, all right, you sneaky guy. You will have only sentries to defend yourself with, and a couple of immortals more like, because this is the sentry immortal expand, expand build known from Wings of Liberty, and Nurture, in such times, he often goes for run buys, and it seems he's going for exactly the same right now. The immortal will already be on the field, and... And uh, the question, the real question is, how well Whitra will defend it? Uh oh, uh oh, the immortal. Oh, don't go there, mate. It's very dangerous. You don't want to pick there. He's got some force fields here, and the mothership core is starting to wail away. Uh, mothership core takes a long time to kill a roach. Um, so, not going to be doing all that much, but adding in the extra bit of damage. The Immortal is going to uh, clean that up with some force fields. Yeah. So, uh, so all around nice play to get the Immortal Sentry defense here. Surprisingly, however, people, m many people, uh oh, the Sentries are up against the Roaches. They, <laughs> oh really my nice God, force fields here. what a nice pocket here. Oh my God, and Whitra has to retreat with the Sentries. One. Uh oh, otherwise, no, Nesho did not micro this properly, and he lost all the Roaches. Nice attack by Whitra. However, he depleted most of his energy for force fields. I'm not sure looks he wants like to keep this the, up. Looks like as the attack uh, coming down from White Ra is going up and over for Nurcio, and Nurcio is going to be going right in. There's pretty much nothing here to defend. He can take out these two pounds or try to 
Run into oh, the main here. And a run by, by Nacho. He's going straight for the main. There is nothing to defend it. Only a single zealot. Zachariah. No! And he falls. And what Nacho will go for? Oh, and a oh, recall. Oh, nice recall. Right back on top of it. Hello. Really great play. <laughs> All of those units are going to die with almost no damage dealt. Uh, well done. It, well done. It did prevent the attack that was about to happen, but... Uh, yep. But that now, is damage in itself. But now Nersha will be switching to Mutas. He already has a Spire finishing up uh, in his natural. He wants to take care of all the pylons around the map. He's a very active player. That's one of the trademarks of Nersha's play. And he will just be going now for a simple Zealot Sentry drop play. Or will he? <laughs> oh, just some Zealots over here. So pure mineral drop. If he loses this, so he can, uh, if he can take anything significant down. He can. He's not going to be too far behind. Oh well, uh, it's not uh, it's not looking bad. Uh, oh, so many zerglings right now, so I don't think those zealots will be able to deal too much damage. White were right now just uh, make sure the reinforcements are flowing. The mutas, uh, on the other hand, for nurture are already on the way. We have ten of them on the map. Additional four being built. Ooh, and Nercho... gonna get scattered by this pylon. Nose is coming. He's gonna have a little bit of forewarning. The cannons, extra cannons, are going up now. Uh, two so far, and he's starting up blink, so yeah. it looks like he's going to be okay. The least defended area right now uh, is the main, so if the Mutas can get over to the main, uh, they'll likely be able to do some damage. There are some uh, stalkers here waiting. It seems Nercho is venturing in another one of his safaris around the map, trying to snipe things left and right. Uh, maybe he will succeed, maybe not, uh, but... You know, this is this is how Nurture plays. This is exactly his style of the, of the gameplay. He is not one of the players who has the best micro, oh, sorry, best macro or micro. He just is relentless with his run buys, and that is what makes him such a difficult player to deal with. Oh my God! Only sentries to defend Only the Mutas sentries. right he now. He can just take out the sentries. Oh, he doesn't. He's gonna realize get that. a lot in the worker line. Um, he's just gonna be able to move out. In the meantime, Nurture is on Nurture is on five bases right now. Yeah. So. He's got a ridiculous amount of gas that he can spend. It's going to exactly. be a huge tech advantage for Nurtio right now. He's only gathering gas from those bases. He doesn't need them for minerals. He only needs them for additional gas. So he wants to go Muta Heavy. And I, I just wonder what will be tr the transition that Nurtio chooses after this. Well, we got Blink and Storm uh, likely coming up uh, from White Rock. Blink oh. definitely coming up. Storm likely. And that's going to be his response to these Mutas. Well, he may oh, also... we're making a big attack in here to the third. Oh this my god! Not a lot of things to shoot up. What is going to stop these mutas? You only have a can uh, couple of cannons that are going down almost immediately. There's pretty much nothing that uh, White Rock can do. He's got a, his blink stalkers up in the other base. The Nexus cannon goes down, uh, and Nurtio's going to get out of there. The um, workers oh. killed right now is 36. Nice. And That's the worker a... count is 82 to 51. So. Uh, Nurtio very much in the lead here. But then we know Whitra is the father of special tactics. I'm sure he may think of something and so many people say, oh yes, you know, he's, uh, he's a very aged player even though he's only above 30. Uh, he's a very aged player but Whitra's multitasking and uh, and his, sorry, his relentless training hours. Whitra is one of the most practicing players around the globe. And anyway, uh-oh, Nurtio just picking the Mutas right now, and uh, not looking good. White Rock got so much damage dealt to those Mutas. I think Nurtio was over-eager with that attack. Yeah, he tried to move in and get some more damage. Uh, White Rock really bolstering up the cannon numbers in that base. He's going to come in here. Oh, he catches the Templar before they get storm oh. finished. Oh, really nice. Really nice. White Rob was trying to make that investment early, build up the energy so when the upgrade finished, he could storm. But oh, oh, all of that gas. And that's the huge disadvantage that White Rob has right now is Nurtio's absurd amount of gas. And Nurtio is just is so rough to watch. It is yeah, so he's many just... news. What, he's got nine on the way. He's got nine on the yes, way. He's got 33 exactly. out already. Yeah. I mean, he's getting his upgrades. So White Rob is how trying is to stop this. I'm not sure, you know, you would need a nice storm, but now Nersho can just engage all the all the stalkers straight in. Oh, there oh, was a nice storm. storm. Yeah, most mutas are now on yellow and red health. However, will that be enough? Oh my god, this Argon oh, dealing so much damage. Oh. Getting very close here. 
And Nurture has Close to the use the magic oh, box. Another night nice storm. No, it doesn't hit anything. Oh. But oh, anyway. A misplaced storm. But anyway, why try GG's? And this game goes for Nurture. Amazing uh, game. is a lot faster now, a lot better at dodging the storm, so it's just tough to keep him down. But it was very sloppy at the end for Nurture to right click on the stuff. You need to remember that uh, when you have so many mutas, you have to avoid clumping them up at all costs. You need to magic box them around the map. Otherwise, what may happen is exactly what, what happened there. Just one single Archon was able to take all those mutas down to red health. And that was not very healthy for those flying shooting tubes. No, not at all. Anyway guys, we'll be going into a short commercial break, we'll be back in 3 minutes with another awesome StarCraft 2 match between Nurture and Whitra. After the stream is finished, we also have a free Heart of the Swarm giveaway for you, because we love you. So, uh, see you after the commercials. All right, chaps, by the way, um, there is something I wanted to share with you about tomorrow, because uh, tomorrow we start a new um, a new European StarCraft League. It's going to be called Jägerlisk Master League. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not a very creative name, but we have such a freaking awesome lineup for that. Let me just give you, uh, let me just give you the lineup, guys. It's... Um, it is it is here on Imgur. Yay! So we can check out the players tomorrow. We'll be going with two matches and uh, let me just check which ones those are. I think tomorrow we'll be having Goody versus Bly and also Snood versus just checking. 
Snood versus Happy. So the lineup for tomorrow is quite epic as well as the whole tournament. Anyway, let's go straight into the game itself. It's 1-1. The players are tied. This is a best of nine series sponsored by Yegaris TV, which wants to make StarCraft 2 and eSports even bigger. Quite literally, this is why we're giving away free Heart of the Swarm after every single stream we do. Ain't that right, Jack? Absolutely is correct, Yegwen. So, um, <laughs> someone said Ki uh, Kikidori, call it Yega League. <laughs> that's actually not too bad. Yeah, I kind of like too, that. But honestly, bad. the we Yega made, League. We might consider that for the season. It's almost like two. the Mega League, but with the Y. You know? Yega League. <laughs> I'm not sure people will be able to pronounce it well. Kailaris has a lot of issues with that, but. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> let's introduce the players here spawning as the red slimy zerg in the bottom right corner. He is none other than Aces Nurcio. And in the bottom left hand corner of our screen, we have the blue Protoss. It's White Ra. There he is. Yeah. All his and his rawness and his raininess and his Protossness. That introduction Only. took a little bit of a nosedive at the end there, but. Uh... <laughs> But anyway, I think people are excited enough to see White Rap play. And Nurture here going for a 14 pull, so nothing extraordinary out of him right now. White Rap, on the other hand, he's going for this pylon here, making sure making sure that there will be a possibility of Forge. I wonder, will White Rap show us some nice style with gateways instead of Forge? That would be so freaking nice, but, uh, but hey, it's... Uh, it's Heart of the Swarm shortly after the release, so players are still doing a lot of experiments with the gameplay itself and the builds. Yep, if you want to see some gateway action, watch some German Protoss players. Watch Hasuobs and uh, uh, watch uh, Zaka. They'll show you some. Uh, they'll show you some gateway openings. I really like that uh, style of play myself. Uh, White Rock gonna be going for the Nexus directly into Forge action. And, Keep it I, nice and, safe. and Isaac Newton on the chat says, Who are these casters? They sound like Vikings. Yes, we do! <laughs> <laughs> that was spontaneous. But uh, uh, I don't uh I don't have any Viking heritage myself, but I hope. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Everyone has. I mean uh, Everyone right has. I mean, the Vikings were everywhere. Yes, they were inviting the whole world wherever they could land a ship. There were Vikings, so how could they not be among your ancestors? Anyway, we have Nurture taking down this this nasty little pylon. I'm not sure did it work well in favor of White Trap, but uh, it did fell to nice pink pieces after it blew up. Uh, so at least that that bit was entertaining. Uh, yeah. So at this point in time, we don't have that. Third. Oh, we don't have the third hatchery going down. Usually, this is the time that the third hatchery has gone down. Oh. So we're gonna have at least a late third. Mister Nacho. Production. So we might see some two base play here. He only has one gas with one, uh, one drone in the extractor. This might just be a late third, but uh, it, it could might. also be something, something a little tricky. Well, could Nacho. this be going to saturate the two bases and then go for something like a roach or a bane all in? You know, if you wonder about our Viking ancestry, you need to wonder about Nurtios because uh, he is probably the best Viking of them all in terms of StarCraft 2 players. He <laughs> he just invades you all around the clock. He drops little <laughs> boats filled with roaches and bugs and uh, he just eats your foods. But anyway, uh, Nurtio is going for an additional hatchery, which is also nice and cool. He just made sure that 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 nasty little Proberto didn't see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so just a little bit late on the third. Not going for the for the usual double hatch. Just getting the gas, getting the spawning pool, uh, the zergling speed up and all that kind of... Um, yeah. Would have been much more suspect if he had if he had been mining more gas, but uh, he was not, so... I'm not Go ahead sure... and take that third. I'm not sure if we're being trolled or not, but someone on the chat asks, are those guys something like pro players? High on ladder? I, I think they are. You may want to check them up on Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> or you may end up like this zealot just being surrounded by zerglings when no one expects it. So, uh, oh, Whitera, my good old fellow, what are you going for? Are those double gateways? 
Or are you just trying to make it look like boobs if you turn your head this way? Probably Stargates. Most likely, Probably is my so. guess. Yeah. My guess is, is he's going for a double Stargate play here. It's kind of hard to predict, but, um, you know, this is, this is the Stargate place. Yeah, if you've ever seen White Rob play, yeah. this is where he puts the Stargates. So, <laughs> if you catch up on the ladder, put your Overlords here. <laughs> exactly, because this is... <sighs> This is only recently became the, the, the Stargate spot. Normally, and oh, a fleet beacon right, right away! Special tactics! Special tactics. Who knows, maybe he'll go right into carriers. He does like carriers over Tempest, generally speaking. Uh, yes. White Rock tends to be making the carriers and not the Tempest. Uh, exactly I've seen, right. I've heard anyway that uh, the, the Tempest is just unstoppable in uh, PvZ right now. I haven't tried on any Tempest. Uh, so uh, it's it's getting more and more interesting, guys. We will see what White Rock goes for. I think those are going to be carriers because we have seen them a lot of times already from White Rock, and he has to run away, run away, chase away with the mothership core. He could, of course, uh, just no. He could not recall it back to the base because he has wasted the energy for a time warp. But still, yes, they are <laughs> carriers directly into carriers. This is uh. This is the stuff of legends, of one particular legend, special tactics of White Rock. He's getting the Graviton Catapult and two carriers. Uh, so far for units, he's he's got the Zealot and a Stalker. Uh, <laughs> that uh, That's what he has in his base right now. Uh, that's, that's it. Oh, two Zealots, two Zealots, okay. So we I got can two already... Zealots into carriers. I, I can already... <laughs> That's a nice tech transition, skipping yeah. up a bit. But anyway, I can already <laughs> imagine uh, an interview with Whitra. Whitra, why do you go for so early carriers? Why do you skip all this tech? I always like carriers, and people don't <laughs> know that carriers are very strong because they are difficult to get. So I always go for carriers and show people carriers are good to defend the third base. Yeah, and, uh -oh. all right. And here we are. Carrier uh -oh. defense. And this nice swarm of zerglings is just now starting to realize, holy smokes, this is this is way too much. Now carriers will be able to deal with that. Those interceptors just have enough firepower, but the Nexus is going down. It did not even get cancelled. Oh my god, this is so huge. Such a huge loss for White Rock. He wants to secure this. Minerals is really big right now. Yeah, and he had his mothership core, and he always has it, so it's just it just has enough energy to start a photo cannon on the Nexus as soon as the Nexus finishes, but the Nexus just did not manage to finish. Nurture just found the perfect timing window for that. We get the Hydra response coming out of Nurture right now. Ten Hydra's on the way, he's getting the Hydra with speed. Um, carriers are still very strong, even against Hydralis, they do a lot of damage, and if you can use the range and micro well with the carriers, you can produce a uh, pretty good job against those carriers. Oh, and another wave of Zergings. This is not looking good. And, and Nurture is going straight for Hydras right now. Hydras are very effective against carriers, but they need to be in huge numbers right now. Those carriers will probably deal a ton of damage in the base of Nurture. He doesn't have a ready response, although he focuses the carrier. Oh, uh -oh. oh. this is a big move. He takes carrier. out one carrier. This may have been uh, a bit over, an, an overextend. Really nice slowing them. Uh, slowing down the motion. Uh oh, of and the, now the there. A, a lot of Zergings got through the main wall, and uh, that's not looking good. Whitra has lost a single worker. No, Roberto, why did you die? <laughs> Sorry for poor that. Little, poor little Roberto. <laughs> you know that 95% of Robertos don't survive the map. I know. I know why no one tells them that. I, do, I don't think they would be so eager to scout and stay and harass and put place, you know, uh, put in place the proxy pylons if they knew that most oh, of them just nice. Oh, oh, carrier oh. is way too close. Is he gonna be able to get out of time? Just barely. Using the range of those carriers, he's gotta get, he's gotta get over into the airspace though, because he can pretty easily get taken out. Yeah. Uh, Zerglings coming in. Yeah, and uh, right, 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 white rod just trying to get into this base, but. Uh, not Whoa. working out too well. Like, kiting with the carriers, carriers is are always losing nice. all their interceptors. Yeah, with so many Hydras, Nurture is just on the move right now, and oh, White Rider is forced to cancel this, and he doesn't have anything else except the carriers. He may lose another one. Oh, be careful, my Russian friend. He's not Russian, of course, but be careful, my friend not. from the east. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so 
I mean, all of these, the Hydras just take out the Interceptors, and that's and that's it. Yeah. He doesn't have. He, I mean, he has character. Carrier. He, he has character. He has carriers, but they don't have Interceptors. He so has character it's, too. It's, yeah, yeah, he's got a lot of different stuff. But uh, but without the minerals, without the third base, he is not able to sustain even the interceptor production. As you can see, not all of the carriers are doing the interceptors. Uh, one of them is just short on minerals. Anyway, the next wave of Hydras comes, and uh, will this be it for White Straw? This is going to be intense. Oh, the Zerglings take up most of the damage. We already have White Shroud with his sentries. A very brilliant move here, by the way, I need to point out, with the Guardian Shield, he will manage to save a lot of Interceptors, but then sentries with no support, they will just drop like flies. Sentry is just very, very powerful, very frail units. And White Rod is going to try to get this third up again, but... Uh, Nurture is relentless. He's just making more and more hydras. Says, All right, as soon as you think you're about to get it up, I'm gonna attack it again, and you're not gonna get it up. Um, yeah. And there's only so much, many carriers you can build off of two bases. The, the gas income is not very high. Uh, White Rod very likely planned to have this third base up sooner, but he's gonna have Storm up, and that's gonna make a huge difference uh, in the next upcoming battle uh, if Nurture doesn't force it before the stim timing. If, I mean, if he manages to get the Storm up, otherwise. I don't see White Rush surviving this push. Anyway, Nurture just remaxing his army right now. His army supply is so freaking far ahead, 104 against 58. And even th even though those are carriers, the interceptors will just drop like dead flies. I mean, it will be like shooting the ducks for Nurture here. Yep, and he's gonna send out his scout. And Nurture is actually letting this go. He's building up his army, and he's missing his opportunity to fight against White Ra when there's oh. no storm. And he's making Banelings, so he's going Hydra's for Baneling composition as well as Corruptors. Hydra, Corruptor, Baneling, this is going the to new be one. amusing. Yeah, let, let's... This is going to be a nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> Not really sure what will happen, really. I... I... Uh... I, I, I don't want to be one-sided, I, I I don't prefer any of the players above the other one, but I'm just interested, what will be the outcome of this uh, upcoming... Oh, really terrible time, he's gonna come over here and kill the destructible debris and the attack is gonna come in from Nurtio. Uh oh, no! No! Nexus Cannon number one is down, he has enough energy to put uh, the Nexus Cannon up at the other base as well. Those two uh, Void Rays so were very damage, brave. Yeah, very and... brave. Yeah, two force fields just barely enough to keep so this. So many storms. Still. There are so many storms right here. Go with and the freaking storms. Yes, the storms go in, but will they be enough? Nurture's army, yes, is dismembered. However, the corruptors remain and they just rip through all the carriers. And the carriers will not remain. Whitra will need to switch to ground based army, but then storms will not enough. Oh my god. And Whitra right oh now god. is just getting disemboweled. All of those High Templar just got wiped out. He stormed, but he couldn't pull them back to keep They just them alive. went like, <laughs> splat. That was it. And not it... enough Void Ray support for the um, for the carriers against the Corruptors, and this is just going to be really difficult uh, uh, game. Right Void. now, it's just an execution. It seems White Ray with one last Void Ray left standing. Oh, and the Corruptor stays here. And even though White Ray has kept all of his bases, Nurture has a relentless wave of reinforcements. He doesn't. He doesn't mind. Oh, I'm losing my army? Yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll just call Carry again for reinforcements, and that's exactly what happens <laughs> here. And Nurture just going for the split push, and White Ray knows. Oh, I'm not able to deal with this. And calls GG. Well played for Nurture. And it was well played, in fact. Well played, indeed. And uh, Nurtio finishes it out. 2-1. Uh, so we're moving on to uh, the rest of this best of nine. White Rush going to have to figure out a way to catch up. Yeah, but Carry Rush, not effective. Yeah, Carry Rush, I mean, it could work against some players. But Nurtio, as soon as he got the win that something like that is happening, he just went for an immediate Hydra counter. And he kept tabs on... Um, how long does White Rap plan to continue the, 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 the carrier production? And uh, he continued his Hydra production at the, at, at the same time. And then he just went for Corruptors and uh, <coughs> smashed White Rap. 
with his bare fist. So anyway, guys, we'll be going into a three-minute commercial break. Go grab your coffee, go grab your bag of popcorn. I wish I had mine here, but uh, there's more epic StarCraft 2 ahead of us tonight, so stay with us. You're watching GigaDisk TV. We just got a fantastic idea from the chat. Isaac Newton, who should be long dead and deceased, says you should put on a Viking hat and cast in that. <laughs> it's I mean it's not a terrible idea. No one has Viking done it before. Hat. You get the Viking hat with the Viking beard that's attached to it. The that would be very nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, although I'm not really sure I could cast in a Viking voice, let me just try that, um, how it works in this game, but uh, let's see. How long can I keep it up until my throat goes sore? So here, spawning in the bottom right corner, we have Asus Nacho! And in the, uh, in the top left corner of the screen, we've got, um, we got White Raw, he's a great player, and uh, very excited to see him play. So, after that last game that was very passive, we had a battle that was very emotional at the end. How well those players will keep it. We have a nice overload scouting right here, but then will he see it coming? You know, you know when you talk like that, I can only just imagine your vocal cords just tearing themselves into pieces. I don't think it, uh, I don't think it's conducive to any sort of healthy behavior, you know? Do you have anything against my vocal cords? They're pretty fine. They have been, they have been strong so long. Well, you know, it's just, uh, you might, you might be killed. Uh, your vocal cords might be murdered. What would you say that? Voice. Because it's the truth. <laughs> Alright, in any case, uh... <laughs> you know, we could, we could keep this charade for another like 15 minutes before I lose my voice completely. <laughs> yeah, but in all honesty, I, I did do quite a bit of study uh, as far as vocal uh, vocal study goes. And uh, if you want to keep casting, you have to be nicer to your voice. So I cannot be a Viking caster? I always wanted to be a Viking caster. Yeah. Nope, actually doesn't work. 
actually doesn't work. By the way, uh, and someone in the done... chat, by the way, really quick, yeah. uh, they they said that I was speaking like Kara Knightley. That was actually just Kara Knightley. I had her step in. I was... Speaking like who? Kara. Kara Knightley. And who is that? Uh, she is a uh, an actress. She's very uh, accomplished. Uh, All right. Is uh, quite awesome. <laughs> I hope you guys were amused. Um, uh, certainly, my, my vocal cords were not. And by the way, I need to give you that, Jack. Uh, your impression of was it British accent or just? Uh... Yeah, there were like a million. Uh, yeah, like UK accents, and that's one of the ones they, that I do. By the way, we have White Trout with a double gateway, which uh, which does that's not... kind of interesting move. And oh oh. He does have oh, gas. Have an expansion. An expansion. Have gas. <laughs> what is what? this? It, it's this is special tactics. This is a <laughs> very strong. It. This is a very strong special tactics. You need to be careful when playing against it. Oh oh! And the zerglings go in. I mean, well, what do you even? What's the plan here? What the hell? I don't. I have no idea what's what the. The what's plan is simple. You okay. just need to throw your opponent off balance. Yeah, I mean, he gets a couple of lings in, but I mean, he could follow this up with some more aggression if he wanted to. He's not going to. He's going to get that uh, second base up. These two lings get to take a bunch of damage out of this nexus. Yeah. And um, yeah, uh, where is where <laughs> where is the rest of this wall? I mean, <sighs> well, it's not here. It used to be a gateway. It is now gone. Um. Really, yeah, really strange opening uh, from White Rod. Don't know exactly what his plan was, but it seems that uh, Nurchio has foiled it uh, in one way yeah. or another. Um, but yeah, so see how this is exactly uh, going to work out. Droning up is Nurchio. So uh, what is the follow-up? What do you do after this? Ah, someone on the chat spotted, uh, yeah, we should probably let our voice acting go um, as soon as we start to learn to pay attention to the game itself. White Trout went for a full wall off. this is what happened. White Trout went for a full wall off because he saw that Nurture was going for a, f for a quicker spawning pool. This is, uh, this is all that happened. So uh, this explains this strange special tactics from White Trout. <laughs> thank you for clarifying that, my dear viewers. We do this all for your own entertainment, so your cooperation is very much appreciated. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry for missing that. Very cool. And it's to uh, I... to pull off the defense quite quite nicely, and we have sort of a normalized situation. Here. So, um, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we have the we have the two gas up. Um, the expansion is going. Um, we're looking at the 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 classic mothership core aggression. Fine, Carl already up for Nurcio and. Your own counts uh, are in the favor of the Zerg player. Uh, but White Rod going. Oh, the Spine Crawler has missed Burrowed. Uh, that is a really bad wrong... time for it to come back. Yeah. But these Zerglings should be able to, yeah, by just enough time, and push this little bit of aggression back. That long nailed finger of the Spine Crawler. But wow, White Rod manages to find a small tunnel here through which he was able to sneak in all of his units. And now the Zerglings come in. But the Zellas are of course here, and Nurcho is just trying to lure Ooh, them the out of the safe. Up. Uh oh, the safety zone is done, and oh, a recall, but a little bit too late. They have already been recalled to the Valhalla. The very important soccer, very very important soccer. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, we got the links coming across the map. Wait, what? Did that just? What? Yeah, the collapsible rocks got taken down from the outside. That's generally what you want to do as a what? Ross would be doing that. Yeah, what? collapsible rocks. That's uh, their way. Uh, why? Uh, okay. I don't know no. why I did that. Okay, misclick perhaps. They are or quite maybe big. he's trying to. I mean, it was one zergling. God, this is gonna be the replay to watch. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, robotic bay is already going down alongside with. 
with a couple of gateways and white right here i imagine he'll be trying to secure a faster foot especially considering the fact that on this map it's not as difficult as uh, on some others uh, and really that's because of those collapsible rocks here yeah i mean at this point nurture did half the work for him so he might as well take that base as his third uh it is a little bit more vulnerable to uh air harass though so okay that's uh that's quite interesting. Nurture already taking a macro hatch. Oh, so Nurture does not really plan to go uh, over three bases. He wants to seal the deal with some aggression right away. Oh my god, 24 Zerglings in production alongside with some Overseers to support that and a Hydra then. So this is going to be a classic timing push with Zergling Hydra. Uh, yep, and we're going to be coming in the... Colossus should be out in time, Thermal Lance, maybe not, but uh, I should at least have one Colossus for this. Uh, maybe two with Thermal Lance if Nurture puts uh, this attack off for too much longer. But, uh, and that's that's sort of the issue, the longer the Asia, that Nurture is, is pushing out this attack, the more uh, the more Colossus White Rod is going to have and it's not going to work uh, out uh, very well. I but think... it looks like we're going to uh, a Muta switch. He's saving up his gas and his minerals and oh. the fire is so... coming out, so... I think he just changed his mind because he saw that uh, that White Rye is going for the Spirit. And this is actually a smart choice by Nurtio. So uh, he has this bunch of Zerglings and he could go right away into a nice bunch of Hydras. But then securing himself with a Spine Crawler wall, uh, he will be able to hold for long enough to make sure that not only Hydras but the Mutas arrive. So this is like an optional, optional tech path for him. This is such a weird thing. He'd be in a perfect position to build tons of mutas, but he spent all of his minerals, and now he's floating 1,200 gas. He, he's get, he's gonna get some corruptors. So yeah, it looks like not mutas after all. He's just gonna uh, have some corruptors to deal with the colossus. Gonna be sticking with this uh, zergling-based army. It seems so. And White Bell will be going to secure this uh, this fourth of his. Or at least trying to get himself of that nasty overlord and all that jelly that has spilled out of that overlord on the ground. We need to remember that until 11 o'clock at night, we cannot call creep for what it is. We cannot tell people that it's actually the you know deceased body parts and all decaying, uh, a biomass that eats things alive. We need to say it's jelly. Yeah, like peanut butter and jelly, yeah. but without the peanut butter or the bread. Yeah, yeah, and it spreads on itself. So we just yeah. dro drop uh, a little bit of, uh, of creep peanut butter on your sandwich and it will cover the sandwich from all sides. And once you start eating it, you will be covered in peanut butter as well. So we need to be careful about that. That's because... an incredibly messy sandwich, a creep sandwich. Oh yes. Not a good sandwich to have at all. Uh, Nurture, they're going to go check out the base, see if there's some sort of fourth coming in. He sees this three base, he's going to be taking oh. uh, a fourth himself. <laughs> 14 mutas, right coming right up. <laughs> Someone order 40 mutas and Nurture is just preparing himself because he knows that there is going to be a colossi push. He he not only went for mutas, he has a couple of corruptors on the map, at least four, yes, four corruptors that is. That will make sure that uh, the colossi go down. I'm not sure why did he choose the corruptors though, he may have as well went for uh, things like the vipers, but, uh, but he may just want to be old fashioned. He's probably sitting there wearing a suit and playing old style, old fashioned Wings of Liberty. Yeah, there's gonna be... There's going to be a huge Muta Force coming in here. Uh, two cannons in place, third cannon on the way. Should be able to get a decent amount of damage done as he runs through here oh, into yeah. the main. He has to be careful though. Storm is on the way. Two Archons already morphed. And oh, oh. Oh, Nexus Cannon gets thrown down a little bit early on the other base. He does have enough yeah. energy for a second Nexus Cannon. Not looking uh, good. But, yeah. yeah, and this is, the, this is the big issue on this map. There's so much airspace. The Mutas can almost always get out, regen, and then go back in again. Yeah. I guess Whitra has stood and spent like five minutes wondering why those collapsible rocks were already collapsed when he got there, but uh, <laughs> I, I imagine that that didn't throw him off balance. Anyway, the, so the, the, the storm is finishing right now. There are some blink stalkers. Whitra is not looking bad. The army supply are very even between those two players, and Whitra is going to secure this port. And if he manages to turtle this through, and uh oh, uh oh, this high number. Oh, nice oh. snipe. Well done. Snipe in the High Templar with Muta, absolutely great. Ten more Mutas on the way, so it looks like he's going to be sticking with this Muta composition. 
I'm not sure um, will that work. There are many. We have two Archons and one additional High Templar on the map. Probably Wydra should go for even more High Templars, but uh, but hey, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, 15 meters, he's just getting his upgrades, and uh, he's already got the one Carapace, and he's moving in. Uh, moving into the main, it's just the question is, what is White, White Rock going to do? What is his response? Oh, and the workers are Army just... is way out of position. This is, he's just taking a lot of damage here. The the Blink is, is attempting to, to mitigate the damage. He's trying to yeah, um, but if, you deal know, with this, but you it's not working out. If he Blank there to catch the Mutas, they would just swing here to the third, and then he would have no Blink. Uh, on, uh, he will just have Blink on cooldown. Now, two more uh, two more High Templars on the way. Where are the storms that White Run needs so much? He will try to seal it off from another side. I'm not sure the rocks will fall by then. Oh, and Nurture retreats, which is a very good uh, a very good move for White Run, actually. <laughs> because uh, otherwise, Nurture would just spill into the third, then he would just evacuate at the edge of the screen. And that would be possibly the worst scenario for White Run himself. Yep, uh, Nurture is sweeping around. He's going to take a look at that fourth base. Storms are all here, the Archons are here. He's, he's put into a corner over here. He has one way oh. out. He can grab it. He's gonna oh. move, move over into the natural. Oh my god. Oh, and it's a long walk for the ground forces of White Rod. This is tough. Good blink in. He's gonna take out some Mutas. Uh, he's gonna try to warp in these uh, other stalkers over here. He's gonna have yeah. one more blink right now. Uh, the blink is up. And will there I mean... be high tempers? There is one high temper with a storm here. Will it drop it? No! No, Hydra forgot about the storm here just oh. now. Oh, too late. Yeah. Oh, super late. Oh, yeah. No. You missed the oh, point here. No. <laughs> yeah, that was. Yeah. So, so I want you to make a guess. How many workers do you think have been killed by Nurture uh, so far? I don't need to make any guesses. There, are, there have been 48 workers oh, come killed on, this game. You're no fun. <laughs> You're no fun. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, but I'm always <laughs> right, and people hate me for it. Anyway, a nice <laughs> blinking of White Trap, yeah, but there. Nurture's just gonna try to take him head on. He just thinks he oh has the numbers God. for it. No storms around. Oh, uh, the yeah. army is making its way over, but again, it's a long walk to deal with this. He's gonna be taking out some pylons over yeah. here. He's gonna be taking out some tech, maybe. This he sees the army. So oh, fun. dodges the storm. Yeah, and uh, oh, this high damper goes, do goes down as well. Whitera starts to dwindle. He doesn't have enough forces to deal with just mutas. Not to mention that there are 12 more mutas on the way. This is sick. Nurture destroying Whitera with pure muta force. And Whitera was just slightly late with his transition into mutas. So he did read what Nurture was showing, the Hydra then and all of that. And he was thinking, ah, you're going Hydras. But what happens if he doesn't go Hydras, he goes all Mutas instead? You just have a bunch of useless units, which are the Colossi, and you don't have anything to do with them. Maybe what, what Whitera should do is just send all the Colossi and all the Zealots, the units that don't shoot up, and make sure that they harass as many bases as possible. But then, to prevent from that, Nurture had the Spinecrawler Forest on the front of his, uh, front of his base. So Whitera seems to be in a very bad position right now. Yep. Uh, really, really difficult to deal with 47 mutas on the map, uh, no matter what composition you have. Just because they're so fast, it's really difficult to land a storm on them. If you're playing Zerg vs. Zerg, you might be able to get a super awesome fungal, but with storm it's just, okay, you're going to deal damage over time and they're going to move right out of it, yeah. heal up in the meantime, and you know. So you need at least two or three storms to, to get the mutas to red health to make sure they need oh, to run storm, away. Storm, storm right oh, here. Speaking of storms, a nice storm. storm off, he gets yeah. sniped. Will he get more? He needs more. He needs more storms right now. And there oh, are Temple no... Archives goes down. He's losing his tech. Uh -oh. uh, White Ra is White, White Ra's out of this game. How is he possibly going to get back into it? I'm not really sure. He has a couple of High Templars, but they don't have energy for Storm. The one with the highest energy has just, yeah, barely just now getting more energy and getting energy for Storm. But Nurture just swimming around the map, just enjoying his leisure time right now with so many mutas. We have, dum 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 dum, 45 mutas on the field right now. So many mutas. Um, so, I mean... 
<laughs> yeah, what, I mean. What, what even with Storm, they're just going through the storm. Oh, yeah, Storm, yeah, no problem. I'm just going to keep flying. Yay! Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, not really worry about it. Doesn't doesn't really cause me too much of an issue. No, uh, you can't expand. You're going to mine out of all your bases, and there's no way that you can expand. And we need to remember that Nurture is on how many? Seven, eight bases right now? Seven bases, that is. And that, that's cool. He can keep losing the mutas. He will just reproduce them. He's switching into Infestor Pit. But I'm not sure he needs that even. Uh, oh, just... I think he's doing it to get the plus three, plus three for his mutas. Yeah. I think that's so. my guess. Yeah, I think so too. And now White Trap Blank in here. And he will not be able to get those mutas. The main is nearly empty. White Trap losing most of his tech structure. Additional seven mutas on the way. Uh, I think White Trap just got annihilated. Yep. Um, just totally crushed here. Because he's gonna. He has a spine crawler wall, so he's totally safe from any attacks. He just build mutas. That's yeah. It's that's all he needs. All he needs. Storm's just missing all over the place. <laughs> oh, it's the mutas. I don't. I don't know. I just. Uh, I think maybe the maybe for Protoss, you just never let the game get to this point. Uh, or you GG. Yeah, there it is. Uh, GG. Well, well done, to Nurtio. Now he's up 3-1. That's... Well, this game started off very intensive, and um, and we know that I cannot keep up a Viking impression for too long, but uh, that doesn't matter. I still will be remembered as the guy who did the Viking and Orc and uh, and lots of other voices. While Nurcio is just dominating this, is it 3-1 for him right now? It is. You're yeah, right. So, um, so anyway... We'll be going into another match after a short commercial break, after a three minute break, where you can go and grab your tea or coffee or popcorn, whatever you wish. We'll be back with more awesome StarCraft 2 Entertainment. Remember to stay until the end of the stream, because then we'll be giving out a free Heart of the Swarm copy. We do that every stream to help esports grow. So anyway, we'll be back. All right, chaps, there's no fooling ya. Yeah. You heard the countdown, and that means the ladder anxiety. Oh my god, I'm going to play a live person. And then, beep, just produce a worker. Beep, 
produce another worker. I don't know why people are getting so stressed when the game starts. The start of the game is like the easiest time in StarCraft 2. It gets more stressful later on, but for some reason people are anxious about that first worker. So anyway, um, let's uh, let's not... These guys don't have any ladder anxiety at all. In You know, <laughs> if you think you're cool because you finished campaign on Brutal, they finished the multiplayer, so... Uh, <laughs> that's it, you know. <laughs> easy peasy. Yeah, they they play the multiplayer on the brutal setting. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> anyway, we have here spawning in the top right position on the Cloud Kingdom map. His name is Asus Necho. And in the bottom left hand corner of our screen, we have White Raw. Loves to go air. Uh, will he do it this time? Um, maybe the phoenixes will mess up his brain and say, oh, I mean, not the phoenixes, the mutas will mess up his brain and say, oh, god, so many mutas, I must build phoenixes. That sometimes we'll happens see. in a prolonged series, and this is a best of nine series, which means that there are still two more, at least, I don't know what the end result is going to be, I don't know if there are two more games, but there may be just two more games if Nurture takes them both, and uh, when you are so far ahead, you can afford to mess up with your opponent as as much as you like, you can go for a 6 pull, see if that works, you can go for some cheesy tactics that no one has seen before, you can do whatever you like, you don't have an issue there, you are very safe. Yep, and we have the uh, same, uh, same basic opening, we have the pylon coming out, we'll have the spawning pool first, no early pool this time, no worries, no early pool this time. Yeah. And let's see what Whitera goes for. Oh, he'll be going for Nexus first build because he saw the timing on that uh, on that spawning pool. And if Desert, sorry, if Desert goes for 14 pool, eh, that's easy. You can just take the you can just take the Nexus. But there is one condition: you need to be extra wary about how many Zerglings are coming your way. Some players make the mistake and they just assume, oh, there are going to be four Zerglings. And if there are four Zerglings, that's easy to defend. However, people like Nertio do the do the trick and they sometimes go for six, eight or even ten Zerglings. And that makes a world of difference. Some of them just get into your main. White Rack cancels the Pion as soon as the model showed up. So that's uh, putting a little bit more stress on the graphics and physics engine. And, <laughs> and that's it, the probe run away. Proberto, don't die, please! Oh, he only has a 5% chance to survive here. Uh, but he's going to yep. try to make it out and... But yeah, so we have the gas uh, gas opening with the... Uh, we have the gas and the pool and the hatchery starting off. We won't see that third for a little while. Hands up, so White Ra is totally safe and feeling awesome. Exactly right, and uh, well, the the real question when you see a Protoss opening with Forge Fast Expand is, what tech path are you going to opt in? And by the way, Whitera managing to stay alive with that Proberto. Oh, right now, double Zergling action. That's not double the Zergling, triple the excitement, and one dead <laughs> Proberto. I'm sorry, this this must have happened, but he stayed I'm alive statistic. with it. Yes, he stayed alive with it for a very long time. Yep, but uh, Nurture doing a really great job. Uh, got his watchtowers. He's got his overlords in position. He's scouting in to see how much gas is at the natural. None gas is what he scouts at the natural. Yeah. And we have a pylon hanging out in the area that might be really great to throw down a couple of star forts uh, or star gates if you're a Protoss player like White Rise. Oh. Um. <laughs> Well, is it good to go for the same build? I mean, uh, with double Stargate, you can go a couple of things. First, you could go just for mass phoenixes, and then Heart of the Swarm, they are just more difficult to deal with. Just because there was an addition of plus one range to them, and you can then also go for, um, for some additional range if you want with an upgrade from Fleet Beacon. But besides that... Uh, Phoenixes are just this fast agile unit that is so annoying for the Zerg. It just gets you rid of the map control. You can take down all the overlords. Ain't that right, Jack? Absolutely correct. And it's it's amazing how much difference that one range made. It was actually a really big, uh, really big change. Because before they used to have you know one extra range on a mutalist. Now they start with two, and they can get two more. 
Um, and once they have that range upgrade, the Phoenix just against the Mutalisk is terrifying. It's oh so powerful, but there are no Phoenixes for now. There is only one lone Oracle. Okay, that's uh, we know Oracles from Matrix. They they do nice cookies, and uh, you know in the <laughs> cookies, in the fortune cookies, you can always find what sort of the what sort of opening and build is your opponent going for. Anyway, this mothership core getting some nice scouting information, and uh, yeah, right now should be feeling pretty darn awesome. Now I'm not sure if Whitra will be dropping the time warp on the workers. No, I don't think he would. It was yeah, we that have just an, we just have an evolution chamber here. No Roach Warren, no Bane Nest. The layer just started, so he just he got his upgrade before he started his layer. Um, interesting move. I just wonder where exactly he's gonna go with it. The cool thing about going for that uh, is that in, you can build any ground unit you want as long as you get Carapace, because all ground units have ground Carapace. Yeah, it's a nice little Mothership Core Oracle combo here. Not actually going to work out. It was a nice uh, little tactic, oh, but... Oh! Oh! Uh, run! Oh, and the Mothership Core escapes uh, with uh, 10 hit points. By an inch. Just barely. Uh, starting to pull Zerglings over here is, is Nurchio. Uh, um, if I can see what he's got for gas count. If I can venture, I guess Nurshio may just be going for some Baneling play. I mean, uh, I saw him doing a very similar build once, uh, so you don't have too many gases with that. No, it's a Hydra then. So anyway, yep. don't mind what I said. Um, <laughs> some nice attack here though, we have the Zerlings dealing uh, a lot of damage. They're gonna get taken out pretty quickly by the Oracles, but they do manage to um, eliminate the ground force uh, of White Rock for the time being. Yeah. And the Mothership Core is just slowly making its way back home. Right now, with only 10 hit points, it probably was just one last light bulb all of the, the whole construct making its way home. Oh, do Doesn't you see what I'm seeing? Do you see I what see I'm seeing? I see the Dark Shrine. I see DT. That's what I see. Yeah. Is that what you mean? <laughs> wow. Is that what you see? <laughs> So you're, you're, you you have quite the sight, my friend. If you manage to see <laughs> DTs, um, I you know I'm a detector. Actually, it's true. Or glasses. Oh. And they detect. In addition to making I always forget to, see. to wear my glasses. But anyway, <laughs> uh, this is going to be a Zerding Baning Hydra mixture out of nurture, very similar to what he showed in two games ago when he was playing against the Stargate Army. Wow, what a nice hold! Oh, nice little just, move. Yeah, just getting two. Um, two or three probes there. Now, Zealous are being warped in here, but will there be a round of DT warpings? I think there will, um, but he may also want to use them as Archons. He has to be careful though, because there are Hydras on the way, and oh uh oh, the Oracles have. Wow, what a reaction time! Did you see that? Oh man, actually, wait a minute. This is almost. I just realized this. This is almost. Uh... Uh, like from Brood War, uh, from uh, what is it? Uh, DT Corsair. This is almost like the if he keeps making uh, phoenixes and stuff like that. <laughs> Back in the day when all overlords were detectors. Can you even imagine that? I can't even imagine now. What? Playing, oh, wait, 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 wait. hold that spot oh, anyway. God, this is a giant attack. Oh man, he tried oh. to go in there, but he has no detection, no detection anywhere. And he noticed it very... Uh oh the Bailings just explode in midst all of that. But there are three more uh, Dark Templars in the background. And they are very happy right now because they've got free reign. But anyway, notice how quickly Nurture spotted those little smudges on the ground. That means that there is something undetected right there. Yep. Oh, and throws down the, the uh -oh. time warp. Not 100% sure about that, uh -oh. but... Uh, oh, what a nice run! actually do quite well against the Hydra. With charge, they could just <laughs> they could just vanish the hydras. They would go poof and splat, and there will be only a smudge of blood left on the ground. But right now, the zealots are still doing quite nicely. Whitra has bought himself a lot of time, and we need to remember in that time he still manages to mine out of this expansion, and this is very important. He also goes for the charge upgrade, so I wouldn't be surprised at all if he switches to a zealot, uh, sorry, charge lot archon army. 
Yep, yeah, it looks like he heard you. Wouldn't it be nice if those zealots had charge? Right, where I was like, yes, ah, it would be nice. Yeah, and they you, will. You are right, my friend. They would be so <laughs> strong. But, uh, yeah, so we have a couple of. A couple of the cans. Uh -oh. He's gonna make a move uh -oh. into the natural here. He's kind of. Oh, those force fields! Ooh, those wow. precious little force fields. That was so good. But the paintings are oh, moving in, and oh! Like, oh we lost a bunch of sentries there. It's really gonna hurt the team. Uh, uh, that this is this is not oh, looking good for Whitra. Come on, friend. Get a really out. strong Hydraling, Baneling force yeah. here. Get a get a grip right now. Nurcio is just demolishing everything with this uh, Hydra-based army, and the Dark Templars did not switch to Archons. And right now, Whitra just barely has the energy to to produce a couple of them. He still has two bases mining, which is not that bad. But he needs something desperately right now. Oh, and the Zerglings come from behind. The Stalkers are being taken out. The Hydralis being taken. Uh, the Hydralis uh, taking out the Mothership Core there. Oh. And this is all the way home. Push to the end. GG. Well played. Trishio just needs one more to win the best of nine. And even though... Uh, if I were to place my uh, allegiance to either Whitra or Nurture, even though I've spent a lot of time talking with Nurture and I consider him my friend, uh, but but Whitra just I feel he's closer to me because he's uh, he's so ancient in gamers' terminology, uh, <laughs> and and I feel I strongly feel that once I get to the age of thirty. I would still really like to be able to play video games, and it's as simple as that. I want to get older, and I still want to play, goddammit. I don't want to be this uh, this old guy that is getting outplayed by everyone. And Whitra is just pushing the limits. He's giving everyone hope that no matter how old you are, you can still kick ass in StarCraft 2. Yeah, I think for a long time, uh, and a lot of people still believe this, that you have to be... Um, you know, young, very young, you know, 22 or 20 is, is old for a game. Oh, you start to get old. You really want to be super young. That was yeah. lightning fast reflexes, but um, not necessarily the case. I don't think that's actually true. So anyway, guys, we'll be back after a short commercial break. Don't go anywhere. The next match may be, this, may be deciding the outcome of the whole series. We'll be back soon. Alright guys, and welcome to possibly the last game of the series, but then the last games are always the new hope, just when everyone thought that the Jedi are wiped out, there was this guy Luke Skywalker and Yoda, and uh, anyway, some ass did they kick. So anyway, uh, here we have spawning in the top, maybe not top, but in the right position on the Antigua shipyard, he is Nersio from Team Acer. And he's at the, at the break point, at the match point right now. White Rod needs to defend this um, game or he will lose the whole series. I already said his name. White Rod. And this, guys, 
remember is called a rubber match not only tiebreaker but also the rubber match i'm not really sure i uh, i i mean if, if the score is not tied that wouldn't be ah right sorry so so how this is uh how you call the last match in a series the possible last match match point or? um i think the from tennis terms like break point and mass match point break so point. for white rods it's break point and right. for uh, Archo, it's match point sorry for giving you if that misconception good. yeah um why not cross because the chicken oh. was uh, the chicken was too chicken why isn't it cross bonds? really not cross no it's not cross yeah so we may be rehosting uh, but let's give the players a chance to decide if they wish that or not um, it's up to them really uh, uh, cross bonds on, on Antigua something that was happening I think there is a lot of confusion recently with the Heart of the Swarm maps uh, anyway we saw Nurture going for a very fast pull and White Trout doesn't oh <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, yo. So uh, the time spent supply capped zero seconds for nurture, thirteen seconds wow. for Whitera. And uh, supply cap, very impressive. Check the That's APM well. nurture with three hundred and eighty APM. Uh, by the way, that, that was early a very, game spam. <laughs> that was a very good advice you gave us, guys, with uh, with showing the stats at the end of the uh, of the game. I think it's very entertaining, so we'll be doing that more often. Thanks for that. We love your advices. Remember, if you want to improve our stream, if you want to let me know, let Jack know how we're doing when we're casting, you can just go to Team Liquid and post uh, and, and post in our stream thread. This is this is a. a that's dedicated to giving us feedback we want your feedback we want you to tell us how to become better caster and this will be with benefit to every single person every single human life on the planet because they will have even more awesome casters around the block and for a minute in the lobby it was a two versus two is gonna be nurture and white raw versus you and i that would have been scary I mean, <laughs> we already knew what the what their openings are, so I I think we've got them figured. Yeah, on <laughs> we would just though, it'd be kind of tough. Yeah, we would just open both with four gates and hope that works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I would do. That's Absolutely. True. That that's probably what every player who's going up against someone who is considered stronger does. If you're playing against someone who is just much stronger than you are. You just open open up with with cheese, and you hope that cheese works. Yeah, generally it's your best chance. You don't want to get into a macro match with White Raw. Probably will lose if you are normal. Yeah. So, um, will we see any early pool this game? Uh, we are or... about to find out. Yeah. We will know. No worker. Yes, there is going to be an early pool this Eight game as well. Pool. So he's going to be keeping that, keeping that strategy going. He did not do that just because he found that it was a cross spawn. So uh, he just rolls the dice at the beginning of every game. There was a player I don't remember his name who was just basically rolling the dice every single game, and uh, that was it. So instead oh, of wondering what the opponent is going for, he would just assume, okay, I will be going this build <laughs> or that build, and just rolling the dice all day long. I mean, you know. There's a reason why casinos are so popular. Rolling dice is just a fun activity to do. Oh, and Whitra is scouting. He sees, oh, something's wrong with the worker count. And oh my god, <laughs> what is this huge bulb here? What is that? What's <laughs> hidden inside? There's a bug. Oh my god, it's going to blow! And we'll definitely be seeing Forge first uh, from White Rock. This is a pretty big ramp, though. I don't know if he's going to be able to wall it off and get the cannon and all that before the Zergs get over here. It's going to be um, tough. It's going to be it's going to be really close. I think he should be able to do it just barely, but um, when very the close. going gets tough, the tough get going, as we already said today. And Absolutely we'll see correct. How, how tough White Try is. Uh, already six Zergings are making their way across the map. Oh, I don't think the cannon's going to be up in time. I don't just think starting the cannon so. now. The Zerglings are all almost across halfway uh, to the map. And he, he has to block this off uh -oh. and get time. He has to. If he oh, if he misses just the block, just barely gets it. Yes. Wow. 
Wow, this is this is so this is still not solved. I mean, the cannon will be up. Yeah, I think that I think I think he has this. I mean, this... got ten seconds to uh, knock down some sort of structure somewhere. Oh. He's not microing his zergling, so a lot of them they're just running around instead of attacking things. Oh, he's gonna I... pull back. I'm oh, not sure he he's may gonna pull have... back. He may have gotten that pylon if he stayed here. I, I'm not really sure about this. Probably Nurture has a charge somewhere there on his wall saying, oh, if you have six Zerglings and if the cannon is 10 seconds away, you should stay or you should not stay. <laughs> but I'm not sure how this works this time. And White Rob right now being here, making sure that the, the expansion of the Zerg will be delayed, or at least he knows and keeps the tabs on where when it will be placed and when. Yep, uh, that's really... Really good situation for White Rock. His opponent uh, opened up with an uh, aggressive build. He played it safe and uh, and got ahead. 19 workers against 13. That is not a situation that a Zerg player wants to be in. You're exactly right. Um, so, uh, so White Rock, I think, you know, I wouldn't say he has it because we need to remember this is Nerd Show. And also we need to remember that Zerg is such a resilient race. Uh, even if you fail a 6 pull, you sometimes can do just a hatchery follow-up and get back to the game after that. Uh, so I, I'm just really wondering out loud what White Rob will go for. My bet would be an air-based army, because with, uh, with Phoenix's Oracles he has the best chances, because the tech of the Zerg right now is so much delayed, so is the tech of the Protoss, but slightly less than Nerd Shows. Uh, yeah, and just the economic advantages be in the favor of White Rock for a while now. I mean, at this point in time, uh, Nurtio can go for something like uh, a really fast third to try to get out ahead. But it's just, he's strapped for cash in, in the most direct of ways. He's got very, very little money to do anything with. Well, Nurtio is getting quite restless with nearly 250 APM against 100. That 100 of White Rock. Um, let's... Let's just see what happens, I guess. Let, let's just buckle up and see <laughs> what the right is going to be, because I already imagine that this game is going to be wild once the forces of evil are unleashed. Uh, yep. Uh, so we get a Stargate follow-up coming up. This is this is a really intense wall. A lot of buildings all over here in the front. But uh, because because Nurtio's tech was delayed so much, it's going to be difficult to deal with the Stargates. Uh, but there is only one circuit. I mean, maybe this game that that strange uh, carrier play would work. I'm just venturing a guess. Really, it's not something you want to risk in the last game of the series, such a cheesy tactics. But uh, it may still work. And oh, Nurture very ballsy, going straight for the third base before any tech. This is so freaking brave. And on top of that, he goes for some uh, evolution chamber and additional zerglings, so he doesn't have and won't have enough workers. But I think he senses that White Rock will be trying to sneak something past him uh, right about now. So this is we go his with the pressure with the mothership core. He's gonna come out. He's gonna get some. Oh, uh, no Zerglings. Zerglings are going to be able to pull back. It's a really good time uh, that uh, Nurture just built all those Zerglings. The Zergling speed is going to finish up really soon, but until that time, uh, White Rock can micro this out and uh, quite well. Oh, and he sees there's like... He's going to get surrounded here. Uh-oh. Uh -oh, really nice the... angle for the Zerg. He's going to surround. He's going to mop this off very quickly. Not this enough energy recall. for a recall. Uh oh. Not good. Not good. He's White Rock. Oh. Oracle going into the fray, trying to make sure something gets taken, but it goes. Uh oh. It, it got aggroed by the Queens. Ooh. And it has to run away now. Not a very good engagement for White Rock. Nexio did not even start building more Zerglings. He knew that what he had is just enough. He knew that this is the timing where White Rock could possibly start attacking and uh, he guessed it right and now he'll be going with two oracles straight into the mine but there's already uh, there's already a spore crawler there so it will not deal too much damage except a couple of workers killed oh he has to be careful not to be overzealous with the oracles run away it, now is it the now is the good time to evacuate my friend yeah really nice um really nice defense here from Nurtio. oh it's a trap back to coming out oh oh barely just barely Hiding at the edge of the and no universe. in the meantime, we've got some Zerglings moving across the map. The rocks have already been taken down. Uh, too many cannons. Too many cannons to get anything done. And more Zerglings getting rallied in. The Hydra's den is on the way and he's spreading the creep. But it's 
we've just got lots and lots and lots of links here. Uh, oh. He's going to try to make something happen, but it looks like White Rod's defense is very strong oh, right now. Yes, with so many cannons here, it's it's just enough to hold this up, and uh, it's getting more intense as we speak. White Rod, with such a tight defense at the start of the game right now, it seems he has a grasp of it. Now, Nershio, I don't believe what he's doing. Oh my God, he just went for ten additional drones. This is so ballsy in his position. Uh, if I will be, if I would be Nurture, I would just fear for my life and try to get as many uh, as many army supply as I can. But no, Nurture is yeah, I'm cool. I'm going for workers now. And the oracles escape. Will they go for some additional kills? Yes, they do. They have to be careful, however. Oh, they did manage to, to snipe off a couple more workers, which is always nice. Both of them have four kills, and with that score, they will just evacuate. And they will see, oh, they will see this huge bunch of Zerglings here. Or will they? Oh, no, they won't. I guess won't. they won't. They and one won't. of the advantage of, is of killing uh, drones that oh, are on the gas is that uh, my... your opponent might not remember to put them back in, and is going to be starved for gas a little bit. But do you see those 14 Zerglings morphing in right now? I'm not sure how well can you defend that. Oh, and this Void Ray will see. Oh, yes. Now White Run knows what's happening. There's an Immortal on the field and it will get surrounded. Oh, no. No, that should not happen. The Oracles are into the fray, but they don't have enough energy to deal with it. The Bainings were trying to do a run by here, but White Run did fend it off. Some nice force fields and he actually defended it. Oh, my God. And the Immortal is alive. <laughs> yeah, the Zerg just left the Immortal <laughs> alone. Like, now we're going for the base. Didn't manage to get it. White Rod with those gateways and pylon to wall that off just in time uh, for that bailing bus. Could have been a, a lot more dangerous if that wall up wasn't there for him. Oh my god. <laughs> this is so awesome. This is. Uh, I was abusing the term the best game I was casting recently, but I, <laughs> I think this one goes to the top three. Uh, I mean... <laughs> yeah, uh, and we got a strong Mutalisk uh, switch from Nurchio. Mutalisk tech switch is just really strong in general. You notice that at the third, there's no cannons in, in the back. The natural, there's no cannons in the back. And the main, there's no cannons in the back. There is no defense for Mutalisk right now. Yeah, and with just is on the sentries. Way. Yeah, there are some phoenixes, however, we need to remember that, but only three of them. And if Whitra, if Whitra misses this, this tech switch, he is basically screwed. And now he notices the mutas, he of course runs away with his probes, but oh my god, the mutas are so fast! Uh, they, they just get so many probes here. Uh, now he's gonna skill. go to this mineral line. He's gonna go right oh. to this mineral line, he's gonna kill even more. So many workers going down right now. In the meantime, oh. there's an attack in the middle of the map with Banings and Zergling. It does not go well for the Zerg player, but it does it really matter. All these, all this economy is going down. And Wytra will be trying to chrono boost uh, his phoenixes as crazy right now, but he keeps losing them. He cannot, he cannot sustain any more losses there. Now the Nexus cannon, cannon just in the nick of time, and Nurture running away with some very hurt uh, mutas, but only three phoenixes to chase them off. Nice micro by Wytra. Oh my God, these guys are playing this game so well. I would love to be at half the level someday. But anyway, the, <laughs> the mutas have been dealt with. This is the most important thing of all right now. And Whitra seems to be having it. Uh, <laughs> tries to go for the middle expansion. How crazy does he get? Oh, there's another portion of mutas. And Whitra's, Whitra has ceased his Phoenix production. What will happen now? Yeah, mutas still coming in. We have, uh, we have 13 on the field right now. Or worker kills. Or, or at least for some lost mining time. Oh. Yeah, just not being able to get a lot of done with those mutas in the middle of the map, though. Nurcio is again trying to go for that central base. Oh, not looking good. And he's he's going for a fleet beacon. Uh oh, uh oh, the phoenixes just got engaged, and just as, just as one of our co-casters has lagged, but that's no problem. Um, the phoenixes survive, the mutas just run away. A very nice move. This is very gentlemanish of Nurcio. Whenever something lags and players just uh, disengage from an encounter, that's a that's a sign of very good manners in general. And anyway, this Colossi getting a lot of hits, but the phoenixes are killing the mutas. But there are so many of them, and uh-oh, the phoenixes have been mismicroed, and the Colossi will be going down. We have those oracles here. Why are they not throwing Envision on the mutas? That would help to prevent 
any sort of run by you would know where they oh are at all God. times. Look at all the workers being killed here, the economy being absolutely destroyed for White Rock, and he's not taking a fourth base. And he's not reproducing his workers. What is happening with White Rock? Where is your spirit, man? You have all right, to take the this. Attack. Here's the attack in the middle of the map. He's trying to win with this army. He's trying to make it happen. He's building one probe right now, and that is all. Um, so he's going to be working across the map. Zerglings and Mutalists uh, might not be so good in a straight-up engagement against this very strong Prowess army, especially uh, especially with the Guardian Shield. The Guardian Shield oh, but very effective against the Mutalists. See this. There are oh, so no, but many spreading out. All of his yeah. units are sort uh -oh. of spreading out. Not That's exactly good. what you don't want to do. Exactly right. Jack, this is so intense. I'm not sure I can handle this. Please help me. <laughs> Someone send me a med kit. Yeah. Send you a med kit. All right, uh, med kit is on the way. It will be there yeah. uh, in one week. So hopefully you're still alive. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. I really appreciate the, it. All right, the the mutilus zergling baneling is coming in here. They're gonna be able to get a pylon down and uh, and do some oh, damage. When White Rock is out of position, he what is, is in what his is there for base. defense for White Rock? He's got 98 oh. supply. The Zerglings are streaming in here, and there's there's seemingly no stop to this attack. Um, more mutalists on the way, and he's got a couple of Phoenix, but it's not oh, enough. My. All these Zerglings are taking down the Nexuses. Uh, the Mutas are taking down the Nexuses. The, the small force of White Rod in here trying to battle it out, but it's just not working out. No, he's just getting dismantled by Nurture here, and he cannot hold it for much longer. White Rod, GG, well played, GG. and this is the end of tonight's show match. Nurture takes it against White Rod 5 1. Holy smokes, that last match was so freaking close. Uh, I. <laughs> I could talk and talk about all the things that went wrong there, but uh, but this was still a very entertaining game to watch and cast. Um, so, uh, Nurture with an average APM of 447. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's on the higher side of APM. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, he, he must have some, some alien... Uh, roots in uh, in his blood <laughs> oh well anyway this uh, this was an entertaining series guys this is not it yet we're still having the free heart of swarm giveaway for you so if you stay after the commercial break after we wrap up uh, wrap it up with the players after we we give them our thanks uh, for showing up and giving us such good games we'll be back with you to give you a free heart of the swarm because we want to help esports grow quite literally this is why after each single stream we give away free heart of the swarm copy or if you prefer wings of liberty copy just uh, you know the, the way you like it. So anyway, we'll be back in three minutes. Uh, don't go anywhere. You have been watching Yegadis TV. And by the way, if you stay a little bit longer, you'll also be able to catch a questions and answer sessions uh, session for me and Jack to answer all the questions you may possibly have. We'll be right back.